December 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 21 from the Old Testament. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like channels of water. He turns it wherever he wants. All of a person's ways seem right in his own opinion, but the Lord evaluates the motives. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Haughty eyes and a proud heart, the agricultural product of the wicked is sin. The plans of the diligent lead only to plenty, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. Making a fortune by a lying tongue is like a vapor driven back and forth. They seek death. The violence done by the wicked will drag them away because they refuse to do what is right. The way of the guilty person is devious, but as for the pure, his way is upright. It is better to live on a corner of the housetop than in a house in company with a quarrelsome wife. The appetite of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor is shown no favor in his eyes. When a scorner is punished, the naive becomes wise. When a wise person is instructed, he gains knowledge. The righteous one considers the house of the wicked. He overthrows the wicked to their ruin. The one who shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, he too will cry out and will not be answered. A gift given in secret subdues anger, and a bribe given secretly subdues strong wrath. Doing justice brings joy to the righteous and terror to those who do evil. The one who wanders from the way of wisdom will end up in the company of the departed. The one who loves pleasure will be a poor person. Whoever loves wine and anointing oil will not be rich. The wicked become a ransom for the righteous, and the faithless are taken in the place of the upright. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and easily provoked woman. There is a desirable treasure and olive oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish person devours all he has. The one who pursues righteousness and love finds life, bounty, and honor. The wise person can scale the city of the mighty and bring down the stronghold in which they trust. The one who guards his mouth and his tongue keeps his life from troubles. A proud and arrogant person whose name is Scoffer acts with overbearing pride. What the sluggard desires will kill him, for his hands refuse to work. All day long he craves greedily, but the righteous gives and does not hold back. The wicked person's sacrifice is an abomination, how much more when he brings it with evil intent. A lying witness will perish, but the one who reports accurately speaks forever. A wicked person shows boldness with his face, but as for the upright, he discerns his ways. There is no wisdom and there is no understanding, and there is no counsel against the Lord. A horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the victory is from the Lord. God, I'm not married. I know you know that. <laughs> But I do have a lot of friends who are married. A lot of them are Christian marriages. Uh, some of them aren't Christian marriages. Some of them are mixed marriages. Um, and I, on one hand, sit in no position to have any say in the world of marriage because technically I'm not married. Uh, but I do feel that I can provide counsel is not the right word, right word, but encouragement, encouragement because of the words you say in the Bible. And I, I, and I love sharing what you teach us in the Bible, even if it's about kids and I don't have kids or about marriage and, and, and I don't have a husband, but your words are still words of truth. And the Proverbs talk a lot about wives, uh, not so much husbands, <laughs> but definitely about wives. And one of the areas in Proverbs 21, it actually talks a couple different places about a quarrelsome wife that it's better to live on the corner of your house uh, than in the house in company with the quarrelsome wife. And then it goes on later on uh, that it's better to live in the desert than with a quarrelsome wife. 
Uh, but uh, what I love about uh, the first one, it's better to live on a corner of the housetop than inside with your wife. Uh, one of the commentaries I was reading about Proverbs 21 uh, explains that that one is actually also about the husband as opposed to just about the wife and, and how she's expected to act in a marriage and respond to marriage. But that the husband is sitting on the corner of the housetop, but hopefully if he is a Christian husband, he is reflecting on why his wife is quarrelsome. What has gotten her to this point? It's pretty rare, not always, but it's pretty rare that the that the wife is just quarrelsome just because. Uh, that it really takes two to tango, two to, to be in an argument. Uh, and I, I love that imagery that I had never seen before when I read Proverbs 21 of this husband sitting uh, on top of the roof on the corner of the house, uh, thinking about what could he have done to handle that communication differently? Is there something he could have done to prevent it getting to that point? Um, also, is there some sort of instruction uh, that he can provide for her in the form of encouragement, um, redirection, uh, perhaps even discipline since he is the head of the household? And what does that look like? But again, all coming from a place of love. So I, I love that image that, you know, so often we find a lot of what to do and what not to do for the wives uh, in the Bible. Uh, but men have an amazing responsibility in those households uh, as head of the household, as head of the spiritual household, uh, in charge of her and, and his kids' uh, spiritual lives. Um, incredible responsibility that you have placed within uh, the men, the Christian men in this world. God, I pray for all marriages today. It's hard being married. And again, not being married, people might laugh at me for saying that, but I watch my friends and I know how hard it is. And I know how hard they work at it. And I know even the marriages that have you at the center of it, it is still a constant um, give, give, give 142% every single day to making that relationship work. God, I pray for those marriages. I pray for the marriages that right now are filled with blessings and are going great and they're in growth periods and they feel like they're in sync and that they can do no wrong and they can do all these amazing things for you and your kingdom. I just pray that they would always continue to find encouragement and during those times that they would encourage other couples as well and, and perhaps teach them and guide them. God, I pray for the couples that are starting to hit some of the rockiness that with patience and kindness and compassion and respect and very much out of love that they would seek your guidance in dealing with whatever it is that is happening in their marriage hopefully neither of them intentionally is trying to hurt the other's other person but sometimes we just say or do the wrong thing without the intention being there and other people's feelings get hurt and there's misunderstandings. God, I pray for all the relationships that have hit that rocky time, uh, perhaps for the first time, perhaps for the four millionth time in that relationship. I just ask that you be there with them. And then for my friends and even the people who I don't know who are listening to this, whose marriages are in trouble, who it feels like there's no way that the marriage can be saved. There's no way to find your way back to why you originally fell in love with that person, why you originally decided to get married. God, there's so many reasons that things could have gone wrong in that relationship. And maybe one of them or maybe both of them just feel like they're, they're end of the rope and maybe they've already given up. But I know nothing, nothing is impossible without you. I know that you are the God of reconciliation. I know that if both of their hearts turn to you, that you have done wondrous things, amazing things, miraculous things in marriages. God, I just pray for healing for whatever that has broken. Maybe one too many hurt feelings, maybe an affair, maybe financial things. 
Maybe there's abuse of some sort. God, I know only with you can these things be healed. We can't do it on our own. God, I just pray that you will wrap your arms around those couples, around those families. That you will provide that support, that strength, that encouragement, that healing that needs to take place, not only with the husband and wife, but probably with the kids as well. God, I know that you don't have any desire for any marriage like that to break up. God, according to your will, according to your timing, watch over these people. Guide them back to the plan that you have for them. Allow them to become stronger in your love and be powerful couples for your kingdom. And finally, God, I pray for the people who have lost husbands, wives, through a divorce or through death, or perhaps are even separated. God, I pray for those people to truly learn what love is. To find who they are in you. To define themselves in their heart and their path and their future with you. That no one out there defines who they are. For good or for bad. You created us. We are your masterpiece. You designed exactly who we were to be. How our hearts were to fill what we were to like, dislike, think about, process. God, I know that the pain is great in those broken situations. But I also know that you are the healer of broken hearts. One of my favorite quotes that is very near to my heart after my heart was shattered here recently it's a quote from Oswald Chambers. If through a broken heart, God can bring his purposes to pass in the world, then thank him for breaking your heart. And God, I did learn so much during those times that my heart was shattered. And I grew closer to you and dependent upon you and learned so much more about the incredible facets of who you are and who you are in my life. God, I pray for all relationships, no matter where, it, where they are on that spectrum. That all of them would glorify you. That all of them would be filled with your amazing love. And that they would follow the path that you have for them in this world. I pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen.